The Unknown Risk of Flying by Christine, Morgan, Regina, Hannah, and Jacqueline. Traveling. For hundreds of years, people have taken to the streets, railroads, and seas to get where they need to be. But only in the last 100 years have people began taking to the skies. Every year, millions of people look to airline travel as a faster, safer route to their destination. Like any means of transportation, flying comes with inherent risks including cramped legroom, coughing neighbors, and an occasional maintenance malfunction. One danger people rarely think about, though, is radiation exposure. So where does radiation begin? Many people don't even realize that their exposure to ionizing radiation begins as early as the security checkpoint in an airport. If it is required that a person be screened at a security checkpoint, they are more than likely submitted to a low level of ionizing radiation. This is due to airport scanners. This topic is a matter of extreme controversy, and for this reason, acquiring an interview with anyone associated with the TSA is virtually impossible. Instead, we have found an informative video explaining the radiation in these scanners. Radiation is a very difficult area to understand because the measures that we use for radiation are very complex. But to better understand these scanners at the airports, I would like to introduce something that is called background radiation. Background radiation is something that hits everyone 24-7 just by existing, just by living anywhere. And this radiation comes from the ground, it comes from the walls of a house, depending on what the house was built upon, and it also comes from the deep uh, sky. It all, it's actually a remnant from the Big Bang many billion years ago. So this is something we're living with every day. So now if we look at one of these exams that are done at the airport, one single exam, that gives you just about the same radiation as driving to the airport. That is about 30 minutes of background radiation. So the amount of radiation is very, very low, and we have it on us every day, 24-7. There is no way we can escape it. And the really funny part here is that the further away from the Earth's surface you are, the more background radiation from the sky you get. So anyone who is flying for six hours will get maybe 300 times more the background radiation dose than one single backscatter scanner gives you. Or if you decide to fly to Europe, that's a round trip of a total maybe 18 hours. That will give you a thousand times more radiation than getting one scan. In summary, I would say that the risks with the machines at the airports, the x-ray machines at the airports, are very, very, very close to zero. Nobody who's traveling needs to have any concerns about the radiation. When it comes to the other piece, the privacy issue, then that is something we can discuss separately. But with this, I hope I have calmed everyone regarding any concerns about dangerous radiation. After a person is finished being scanned and steps onto an airplane, the last thing on their mind is the likelihood of exposure to dangerous radiation. Radiation exposure on your flight begins as early as the initial ascent into the air. Depending on the estimated time and altitude of the flight, radiation exposure differs from passenger to passenger. This video clip shows a man on board a flight from Amsterdam to San Francisco. He has brought a Geiger Mueller counter along with him so we can visualize how the radiation intensifies as he ascends and remains high throughout his flight. You can clearly see that the radiation exposure changes constantly and reaches a few different levels. The highest amount of radiation he records is 2.5 millisieverts right before he starts to descend. So what kind of radiation are we receiving up there anyway? Earth and its inhabitants are constantly showered by radiation from space, like a steady drizzle of rain. This shower of cosmic radiation is created by charged subatomic particles that originate in our galaxy, other galaxies, and the sun. The particles interact with Earth's atmosphere and magnetic field to create cosmic radiation. 
The charged particles exhibit a wide range of energies and the rate at which cosmic rays bombard Earth depends on whether they are low or high energy. The vast majority of cosmic rays are low energy. Although high energy cosmic particles constantly pass through and sometimes interact with our body, they are very rare and very difficult to detect. About 8% of our annual radiation exposure comes from outer space. The atmosphere shields us from cosmic radiation and the more air that is between us and outer space, the more shielding we have. The closer we get to outer space, the more we are exposed to cosmic radiation. This holds true when we live at high altitudes or fly. The amount of cosmic radiation you are exposed to while flying depends on your altitude and latitude and solar activity. For a typical cross-country flight in a commercial airplane, you are likely to receive 2 to 5 milliram of radiation, less than half of the radiation dose you receive from a chest x-ray. People in the United States receive an average of 360 milliram of radiation per year from natural and man-made radiation sources, which include cosmic radiation exposure during commercial flights. So is it even safe to fly? Ways to protect humans in airplanes during flight is still in the process. While there is no real way to protect yourself while flying, the FAA and the EPA can make sure you do not receive more than normal amounts of radiation. This informative video clip goes into more detail about the cosmic radiation we receive on board an airplane. Joseph Tremper is happy to be home working on his garden. But as a frequent flyer, time at home is rare. Much of his days are spent in the sky. I travel about three or four weeks, uh, three out of four weeks a month. Flying a lot can have regular risks, but space physicists say many travelers and airline crews are at higher risk of radiation exposure during flights that fly high over the poles. The frequent flyer is uh, susceptible to more radiation, and particularly at high latitudes. We're all exposed to some radiation every day, but the Earth's atmosphere shields us from most of it. At higher latitudes near the poles and altitudes above 30,000 feet, the Earth's protection is weaker, putting flight crews and passengers at risk. Now researchers have a new model that predicts the amount of radiation in space and how much radiation reaches Earth during solar storm activity. The model shows the real-time radiation exposure levels uh, that is received from the surface of the Earth. During a solar storm, radiation levels increase. This model shows high levels of radiation in red near the Earth's poles. The new model helps alert crews of radiation risk in flight, so pilots can take measures to avoid it. That if you descend one or two kilometers uh, in altitude, then you can significantly reduce the radiation exposure. Scientists hope to make radiation prediction forecasts similar to local weather forecasts. Right now, Joseph hopes his travels will keep him safe and focused on fun. Uh, my favorite part of traveling is that I get to see uh, lots of interesting places. I'm Jacqueline London, reporting. So while radiation exists all around us and in our everyday life, it proves to be a little more radioactive and hazardous up in the air. Luckily, it seems we have nothing to worry about. Great measures and lengths are being taken every day to ensure the safety of airline passengers. We have enough to worry about when we fly. The last thing you want to think about on your way to Hawaii is the effects of harmful radiation you may endure while en route. Life is my